welcome back to Graphic Content with Dave. And Jack. How's Hi. it going? Great. It's summertime. It's very hot. Uh, it's skated here. Extremely hot. Yep. And But as I was saying, I'm not going to complain till August because this winter wasn't so fun. <laughs> so, I'll, you know. Yeah, it's a hot one out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we have some pretty challenging selections this go around. Very, um, very good work. Incredibly. I, I, I was saying to you that I think we could very easily do one episode for both of yeah, these books. I would agree. But fortunately, thematically, they do connect. They we do. Were, yeah. And there's some connections with their themes, with uh, some situations going on right now uh, politically. Yeah. Um, so the first book that we're going to talk about is Yellow Negroes and Other Imaginary Characters by Yvonne Algabe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, by... Uh, New York Review of Comics. Parisian born, um, but spent a lot of his time uh, in his younger life living in, I believe, Mali um, and parts of Africa. Um, and all the uh, chapters in this book were prior printed, I believe, in zines. Um, and in terms of the form of the book, each story uh, is a different na uh, form of narrative. Dialogue, uh, documentary, poetry, um, but thematically, they all connect, and mm -hmm. um, in ways that are not necessarily uh, uh, what's well, uh, uh, train tracked in one uh, like linear. Le yeah, in a nonlinear no. way, yeah. it all fits. Um, yeah, and uh, so the, the there's there's very specific. It's referring to some very specific stuff uh, that happened in 1961 or the early 60s uh, with uh, Algeria and uh, I believe French occupation. Um, and forgive me, neither of us looked up the history of this, which we should have done <laughs> and may have helped, but, it, it, but we were actually talking about that earlier. It doesn't necessarily um, help. It, it might provide some context, but it, it really is uh, a story about immigrants and the colonized and the colonizers, and uh, the the story that takes place between the three main characters uh, within the largest story in this book, uh, which is, I, I believe is called Yellow Negroes. Yeah, the title uh, story. The title story. Um, and there's it, an it's a, it's kind of a microcosm of uh, the relationship between conquered and conqueror, um, uh, imperialist. Uh, enforcer and uh, those who uh, are living under re uh, imperialist regi regimes. Um, um, I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, y yeah, I was to add to that um, the post-colonial generational disconnect that trickles down. Mm. Um, you know, the main character in Alion, his girlfriend's white in it, but there's this, th there's this, you know, specter Sinister specter, and you know, you were saying in passive microaggression in passive aggressive ways, and I was like, I kind of disagree. I was like, I think they were just aggressive ways yeah. that um, people just uh, blatantly are racist um, yeah. to the characters. Um, and in ways that, as an American uh, and not a European, that were things I didn't, cause, just because I'm not European and I'm not there and it's a different culture, uh, were new to me. Um, like there was lines like uh, uh, Alian's girlfriend's mother and she says like, oh, but he's African. He's not West Af Indian. And it, the, in, it appears in France there's this hierarchy of different, well, you know, types of racism mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. is, you know, uh, very foreign to me. I don't really get it, you know. And I think part of what, m you know, may have been a little more foreign to both you and I uh, living in the U.S. Uh, with these kinds of stories is that w we uh, might be kind of uh, insulated from immigration uh, woes and tales of of, uh, of immigration um, um, uh, oppressiveness and other things associated with that um, until the current political climate in the U.S. and so mm -hmm. and as such. Um, this is very much a statement um, on that um, and uh, how what's happening in the U.S. right now politically in regards to immigration um, is part 
of um, how how countries have reacted against uh, immigrants um, and how uh, colonialist countries have acted against um, the the people that have inhabited the countries that they were colonizing um, and it's been going on for centuries so um, this book really helps in a very poetic way to um, to tell a tale to tell a few tales of uh, aggression and um, harm inflicted uh, the daily uh, harms inflicted on, uh, mm -hmm. on immigrants uh, who are not living yeah. in the country that they were born in. And um, specifically in this book, perverted uh, kind of uh, difficulties. In the case of Mario, like let's get to the nitty, who is this Mario guy? Yeah, so Mario. He is, I, I thought he was uh, an intriguingly sinister character. Mm. I read the title story twice and I still can't really figure him out to the point where I didn't know if it, I, his intentions are very strange. Yeah, so he, he's, a former, he's a former soldier who um, acted against the, um, the Algerians, uh, apparently. Yeah, right? yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I couldn't, I mean, it's, he's, yeah, he's, it, yeah, I guess so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. it, it, um, there's a passage. You don't mind if I grab no, no, it? No, go yeah. ahead. Okay, I'll find yeah, it. So There's a part where he tells his tale. Um, you caught, yeah, I'll find it. Go yeah, ahead. so so Mario and Elaine and his girlfriend and Elaine's sister, uh, they kind of form this, uh, this uh, they're the central four characters within the book. Um, and Mario, who we've been discussing, is uh, uh, an older um, white, man who um, comes off he's extremely desperate yeah too. yeah he's very he's very desperate and as the as the story proceeds and kind know, of pathetic very pathetic yeah he he's imposing himself on onto um, Elaine and his sister Daya um, simply by under the auspices of answering an ad that uh, Daya had had posted for housekeeping and he uh, calls constantly um, and to the point that none it's of harassment. Them, yeah, none of them want to pick up the phone. Yeah, um, he shows up unexpectedly and, uh, and, and too generous. Mm -hmm. I will give you all this money. I will, um, but at the same time, asking for absurd love bombing essentially. Uh, what yeah. kind of like what cult leaders do, which is bombing you with finding desperate people who don't have papers, who don't have, you know, who can't get official jobs. You right. know because they don't have papers. So finding and people who are desperate and then love bombing them, but then expecting that they're going to come to your birthday party or your Christmas party in the middle of the yeah, friggin' in, this instance, in the middle Christmas. of the night. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> un under the, the, with the understanding that if you don't, hey, I can turn you in. So yeah. there, is, there is this. Um, th Catch 22. Yeah. yeah. And, and he's, he's waving it in front of them. Um, all the time throughout this this short story, and so they're trying to navigate um, how how to deal with this guy. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I will point out once again, um, just to go to content and form, mm -hmm. um, the form, the drawing style. Um, I was reminded of Raymond Pettibon. Mm -hmm. Totally. I was reminded of, uh, to a lesser extent, Kara Walker in Silhouette. Mm. Um, but there's this strange kind of, I don't know how he gets his drawing line, but it almost looks like photocopied three times. Mm. I, don't, I don't know how he does it. There's it's, a nice texture going on. Yeah, there. and everything kind of looks, it's, it, there's no gray tone, there's no, there's no mid-tones, mm -hmm. but um, there's this very loose painterly mark that almost looks like charcoal. Um, and he has that John Singer Sargent ability to do one, two, three lines, and then it's kind of perfect. Mm. Um, as an artist, it's frustrating to look <laughs> at. Um, but to the content, yeah, how that- it's, it's a gorgeous book. Yeah, yeah. how that reinforces the content is that um, I'm just looking at this and I, I found the scene that describes Mario, if you don't mind. I can read it. Sure. Um, it's this, once again, to reinforce the Raymond Pettibon connection, uh, the, narr the narration here kind of slips into you don't know who's narrating it. Mm. Um, and when you look at a Raymond Pettibon, half, th th there's the unknown narrator, you know, sometimes it's, it's definitely not the voice of Raymond Pettibon 90% right. of the time. But this says in a kind of um, accusatory way, 
I know who you are, Mario. I've done some research. In November 1959, Maurice Papon, Paris per Prefect of Police, created an auxiliary force made up of Algerians. The unit had carte blanche to break up the National Liberation Front's network in Paris and, quote unquote, free the North Africans from racketeers, torturers, and fliga murderers. The squad, squad would help repress the Algerian demonstrations of October 17 and 18, 1961, which is the reoccurring event. Mm -hmm. um, Mario, or more precisely, Lieutenant Jean-René Nouchet, uh, I think it's telling that he's, his name has changed, mm. um, was one of the only Algerian officers leading this Harkai group. And then it goes into a passage about how he has enough money to sleep with a white prostitute as opposed to a black prostitute. Right. Once again, uh, showing the not very passive aggressive attitudes of this cruel world that mm. we're in, you know? Yeah. And not to say that being passive aggressive is okay either. Because yeah. it's not. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, just so much, so much going on. Um, and like you say, like not knowing who exactly is telling the story mm -hmm. um, helps create this kind of dreamlike. Uh, um, uh, feel for the whole book. Um, yeah, and and some chapters just kind of go into uh, like folktale. Yeah, almost. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 for that reason, it's very it's very poetic, um, and that a that actually makes the the whole thing all the more disturbing, you know, because um, he, you know, by talking about myths and and uh, being kind of poetic. And having a, a, a narrator, not an unreliable narrator, but a narrator that you're not sure who who that is, um, you know, it, it adds a level of disturbingness to the story, uh, to an already disturbing story. Mm -hmm. um, and I I really appreciate it. We were flipping through right now, and we were looking at the the epilogue, um, and that's probably like some of the most um, the the last couple of chapters are the most poetic. Mm -hmm. um, and they do refer to uh, contemporary events, um, you know, tying it back to um, um, contemporary uh, feelings and xenophobia uh, towards immigrants. There's a picture of Trump at the end. <laughs> yeah. Um, and one, one thing that we're reading in right now that stuck out to me directly addressing immigrants, with all the talk of migrants, or in other words, ever since people started fleeing and dying in such numbers and washing up in such numbers on beaches, I keep thinking of the first pages of Aristophanes' demonic tale. Have those who reached the shores of Europe really escaped from hell? And then it goes into some details mm, about, yeah. the, um, about the 1961 incident um, and a contemporary artist's response to it. Um, so yeah, that that really is kind of the conundrum for the uh, for the refugee, is you know your situation is desperate enough that you yeah. are uprooting yourself from everything that you've known and putting yourself in this uh, unknown land uh, where people where you face the threat of people being openly hostile to you. Yeah. So you're escaping one version of hell for potentially another version. Um, yeah. As they say, out of the frying pan and into the fire. Yeah. 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 So. And uh, um, another, to piggyback on your comment, mm -hmm. there's the chapter Rhea, um, which is about Elon's sister. Mm -hmm. And she is a religious figure um, who is constantly looking for salvation in Christ and through the reunification of her husband and him, who is not there making money. Um, and I thought it was very sad to see how the stresses of poverty and the stresses of immigrant life can dissolve a relationship through mm -hmm. its through pressure, you know. Um, and um, it also was, I thought, heartbreaking to see it through the lens of religion um, and constantly wanting more and or just wanting peace and mm. not getting it. Mm. Um, I think that's something that everyone should just kind of needs to live with a little bit. Yeah, you know that that. F uh, yeah, I mean, not I'm I'm personally not a hyper religious person, but it, and I don't really know what I think about that, and maybe that's why I was intrigued by it because mm. I didn't. That's it's a, it, once again it's a perspective I don't personally have. 
Um, but I, I didn't think about these issues through that lens of religion, too, mm. and um, how uh, existentially heartbreaking it must be to constantly be let down and to like be uh, in a frying pan and then a fire. Yeah. And just going back to, to Mario's kind of aggression, because it is so pervasive through that story. Mario, like I mean, I, I, I'm not, I'm not um, sorry, I am not uh, advocating Mario. I'm just saying he is an incredibly interesting fictional character. Right, right. I thought he was just, he's so creepy and yeah. so sinister, yeah, and, but so, and so bizarre, you know. And so the, the, the tactics that he's using in a very domesticated, um, Setting mm -hmm. uh, in the in the spaces of their shared apartment of uh, Elaine and his sister um, is they're the tactics of uh, intimidation. They're mm. the tactics uh, that that um, that generals were trained to do to mm -hmm. oppress people uh, it, in a warlike yeah. environment. Um, yeah. You know, I've read about like the School of the Americas and and. Uh, how they were educated by the U.S. these these Central and South American uh, generals, and how they were trained in intimidation and yeah. kidnapping and torture. And so I thought Ugh. that there was that there was something that like that was the link that mm -hmm. this this old military guy had is he was still using those uh, those similar tactics in this very kind of yeah. domesticated. That's um, kind of uh, in this domesticated situation, suggesting that for him uh, and 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 maybe for um, for the white population in Paris, you know, the the war goes on. Yeah. Um, you know, because because the the, the migrants' presence is is uh, is all too much a reminder of of injustices done in. Uh, it, it's so interesting you see it through that lens because when I read it, I saw it through the lens of a book I made called I Escaped a Satanic Ninja Cult, hmm. which I was investigating cult mind control. Hmm. And there's so many connections between military torture techniques and cult leaders. Hmm. Yeah. We could leave it on that if you want. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, vital reading. Vital, yeah. You got. It you got to read it. It's I'm, it's I, amazing. I haven't been disappointed by New York Review of Comics. They're uh, they're a really great yeah. um, imprint. Um, um, so uh, now let's go to uh, the torture of immigrants U.S. side. Yeah. Yeah. So this book here, which um, I had picked up at um, what's the Canadian uh, the Canadian con uh, <laughs> TCAF. Okay. I picked it up at TCAF uh, last year, um, and. Really, really uh, enjoyed it. It's it's a kind of written in the style of a of a diary memoir of uh, mm -hmm. Eleanor Davis, the author's um, uh, bicycle trip across the country. Um, she has a middle age crisis of sorts. Um, I wouldn't ex I wouldn't necessarily well, say she, crisis. She says um, I th I thought one of the most important. Sorry to cut you off. No, no, no. Go. One of the most important two page spreads is. This right here, I loved this spread. It's almost like a New Yorker cartoon or something. Yeah. Um, and it's si simultaneously very relatable, uh, but sad. It's like, uh, she's at a party and it says, what made you decide to do this trip? People ask. I say, my husband and I want a baby, so I figure I either do this now or wait 20 years. Or my dad built me this bike and I hate boxing and shipping bikes, so I decide to just ride it home. I don't say, I was having trouble with wanting to not be alive, but I feel good when I'm biking. But that is also true. Mm. Um, and what I loved about this book, there's, first of all, because it's stream of conscious and it is a diary, and she's not like, you know, it's not like a, a, a plot with a beginning, middle, and end. It's a, it's a diary and something different happens every day. Um, there's a lot to, the connection we were coming talking about is immigration, now I'm talking about depression. Mm -hmm. Clearly there's a lot in here, but yeah. uh, one thing I'd like to talk about is how exercise defeats depression and how exercise is one of the best antidepressants. And um, that was something I really related to a lot, you mm -hmm. know. Um, I don't bike, I skateboard, but that's what it's about. Yeah. You ha um, she talks about how just being in movement and, you know, occupying your brain through uh, biking, um, because you have to kind of pay attention to what you're doing. Yeah, um, and doing it on a regular basis, mm -hmm. building a routine. And getting your heart rate up, like, 
makes her not want to die. Like that's mm. incredible. It's so incredible that she wrote a whole book about it. You yeah. know, um, so read the book. This book alone, just for that. I mean, I think it's in some ways a self help book, and I feel that the the rhythm of the book kind yeah. of mimics uh, totally. a heartbeat. Or just there's a pace to it. Mm. Like there's these bam, 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 three page things that happen. And she gets into a, a rhythm of biking and that gets into the rhythm of making the art. And uh, before you know it, she's this like self fulfilling mm. engine and everything is turning everything else. Um, and she's not, she's not working alone necessarily. Like it is mm -hmm. a, a lonely, lonesome trek mm. uh, for the most part. Mm -hmm. and, and she, you know, you definitely feel that uh, in her writing. But she also writes about the people that she encounters, um, the, the, the helpful people who like uh, help tune up her bike, um, who she yeah. stays with for a little bit, if I remember correctly, um, mm -hmm. and the, the people she's freaked out by. Um, you know, uh, incidents on the road where, you know, she feels like her, her life was on the line. Um, and then, and then there's there's one scene in particular, kind of early on in the book, where uh, she and and a group of people are looking at a, a, an immigrant um, mm. uh, or a potential immigrant, that's somebody wandering through uh, the Rio Grande, and uh, it was like a it was a very it's a very poetic scene, um, and it, it with 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 uh, scenes deleted. To like, she doesn't draw the actual confrontation. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. She she's focusing on this very slow, plodding movement of uh, of the person in the river and all the people watching him, including border patrol agents, um, and how they're just waiting for yeah. something to happen, waiting for him to go to one side or the other, mm -hmm. um, waiting to find asylum. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. I'm sorry. It's not and, funny. And uh, and yeah, the, and the, it has all the 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 good stuff that you expect out of like really really great memoir writing. Yeah. Like stuff like the 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 minutia of you know certain plants growing along the highway, um, and uh, you know just meditations on you know being outside of your regular routine, being outside of urban spaces, and and being more uh, into putting yourself consciously into an environment where you are just going through things, yeah. um, where, where, where you're on a journey. Um, mm -hmm. I, um, yeah. I thought about, it's an, Amer it's an American book, and I, it, it, rem it felt like it was in a tradition of a specific American genre of the road book or the road trip, you know, easy rider on the road. Mm. Travels with Charlie. Um, this is a great addition to it. And comparing it to those works, um, I think you can learn a lot about the time we're in. Um, for example, uh, she shares her anxieties with her partner through the whole journey, like via text or phone. And I think she references Twitter at one point. Hmm. So, to a certain extent, when compared to, you know, say John Steinbeck with his dog in you know Montana in the 50s she's more connected and we're more connected mm. you know and yet simultaneously throughout all throughout the whole book she stays with an old lady who's lives in an old creepy plantation um, she gets a ride with a priest who clearly has control of his wife and through this time of complete like utter connection through the internet there is this massive divide, which is ironic. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, like people are uh, as disconnected as ever. Um, mm -hmm. And yet we have the tools to, to communicate. Be, yeah. yeah um, um, and I, I was just randomly like flipping through the book and um, came across this page. Uh, and th what I love about it is like the, the ideas are, are, are very simple and the language is very simple. And um, in this page, she's setting up a tent. Mm -hmm. um, while you are setting up your tent, anything can get you. And then mm -hmm. the opposite page, inside your tent, you are safe. Mm -hmm. And, hmm. you know, hmm. it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a very simple concept, 
It's, uh, you yeah. know, a child can understand it. Um, within the context of the book, it has, it has a weight to it. Um, and uh, even, even, even just looking at these two pages, you know, there, there's, mm -hmm. th it's still um, kind of stark, you know, and, and the starkness of the book, I think, um, is, is in the simplicity of the language, the deceptive simplicity of the drawings, because, um, mm -hmm. you know, even though the line quality is, is very simple and clean, New Yorker cartoonish, <laughs> like you said, um, <laughs> that, that there are some pretty weighty ideas here. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, maybe I'm reading too far into it, but do you, would you agree that as the book went on, the way she drew herself changed? Like, by the end, I felt like she looked like Superwoman or y something. Yeah, well, doesn't she talk about the physical change? Well, yeah, well, she does, yeah. uh, she does um, what's the acupuncture, and she talks about her knees a lot, and, you know, just uh, the... But like yeah, an image like that, yeah. I, 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 you can you can feel her feeling better about herself yeah. as the yeah. book goes on and progresses. I mean, in some ways, it's not subtle at all. She's lifting her bike over her head triumphantly. Yeah. But I think that's, uh, you know, us cartoonists. I think uh, we sit around and at our desks a whole lot, and um, that breeds depression. Uh, there's not enough vitamin D, um, especially in the winter. Especially in the winter. <laughs> Um, and it's, it's very important to get out there and move your body. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, it's a, it's a conundrum of 2018 that we just sit around and look at screens a lot and that's not for your physic, physically healthy, you know? Yeah. And, uh, so get out there and ride a bike or a scooter or play some baseball. Make or, yourself less yeah. depressed. Look at, um, look at people in the eyes and play basketball and sh pass the ball. Yeah. Somebody. And I, I don't say that lightly. Like no, I, have, no. I have friends dealing with depression and, yeah. Um, but there are there are ways that you mm -hmm. you can make yourself less d depressed, yeah. um, especially if, if you find yourself trapped in a routine. You know, find find small ways of breaking it and and changing your routine and t talking to people who care about you because yeah. um, that's important. Yeah, I didn't. I can come off as obnoxiously optimistic. I didn't mean to sound sarcastic with my references to sports. No. I was being completely serious. No, no, yeah, yeah. Um, um, and, it, it's, and you it's know, exercise exercise isn't gonna. It's not like a cure all for depression, right, but for sure, uh, for someone who's been down the dumps before, um, I am a born again skater, and I salute Eleanor Davis for being a biker. Yeah, because that ain't easy, and you know, it's not easy. It's not easy. Uh, especially biking in very unbike-friendly un territory like the American South and Southwest, which is what she does. Or Boston. <laughs> or, <laughs> yeah, the Northeast isn't all that friendly either, but uh, the, uh, the, yeah, that's another show maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, two very, uh, very uh, uh, compelling mm -hmm. reads this go around. And please read the viewpoint of the immigrant. You know, they, uh, these are in vital reads because they're coming from people who are scared. You know, or are looking at people who are scared. You know, is that fair? Yeah, yeah. I would say. You know, I think it's you need. We should read books of Im from people who are immigrants. Yeah. You know? Right on. All right. Okay. Yeah, this is this is a good show. <laughs> um, I suggested uh, Headlopper for next week if you want. Sure. It's an homage to Conan the Barbarian. Yeah. We could change it up a little. That sounds good. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. You yeah. know, we'll have more books on the way. Thanks. All right. See ya.